you well. So this is my next guest interview with the lovely Jenna Boyd. Take a listen. May I start every interview. Can you remember your first theatre um, experience? My memory of my first theatre experience is is probably going to London with my drama group. But there, there, there were, but that, but I no, with school. Sorry, when I was like ten years old, and we saw Return to the Forbidden Planet, and I loved it. But there was so, I mean, you know, there were more experiences before then. Um, I've said this to many people, but it's true. Apparently, when I was eighteen months old, so I'm born in July, so it'd be like the Christmas one after I was born. I went to see my mum took me to see the Panto, and when we came out. Um, apparently I turned to him and said, mummy, when I grow up, I'm going to be a princess in a pantomime. Now, obviously that didn't work out quite well, but that was it. The seed was set. But all my really early memories of musicals are from film musicals. That's what I thought I would do. Okay. Like, when I was a kid, I was like, that's obviously musical theatre on the telly, on, you know, on video, VHS. And I'll be in those. That's what I'll be in. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I love me. <laughs> that's the thing you know you have that that yeah. concept of it isn't it and and yeah you just I teach kids now and, and they're like that you know they watch things and they're like oh yeah I'll, I will be Julie Walters yeah, yeah that's... sure why not <laughs> but I I, like, I do say to them I'm like well someone's got you know you, you somebody bought... oh my god if I had a penny for every time someone said oh well only only one in a million people make it and I used to look at them and go well I'll be that one someone has to be that one why in God's name can't it be me? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And the definitely. Got to, if you be, don't believe it, it's never going to happen. It's 100%. never. Gonna 100%. I, I say this to the kids all the time. They always say to me, but you, you really believe in us, Jen? And I'm like, well, yeah, I have to. I have to because if I don't, you don't believe in yourself. And then the audience are going, oh, this is kind of like a mediocre, okay ish show when actually you're so capable of doing a brilliant production. You're being brilliant human beings. Yeah. Gonna be a, you're not muggles you're exceptional exactly <laughs> love it and um talk us through your career so far ah uh, gosh um it is hard it's impossible for my brain to wrap around the idea that it's been 20 years <laughs> it's been 20 years since I graduated drama school um and I've done it's just been of course I've done so much because it's been two decades <laughs> two decades I mean it, there are people who are going to drama school this year who were not born when I graduated in fact there are people going to drama school this year who probably weren't born when I started which is disgusting but that can't be true that can't never it doesn't matter it just cannot be true um but yeah so I did my first job out of drama school was the beautiful game I remember I was I got the audition off my showcase so I do you know what a lot of it is right place right time the right show is opening at, at the time that you're unemployed or in my case the time I was coming out of drama school they were looking for real people and I do a lot of shows where they cast real people um and that was one of them we want real people I was like oh, okay it's supposed to work you fake people um so I just happened to be graduating drama school when they were looking for young real looking people and um five auditions later and I, I I got it and it was just so peculiar and weird and um after that I did my first tv job which was a terrible but brilliant but terrible soap called um night and day Okay. And it was meant to be on, it probably won't remember, it was meant to be on at like half past five on, on a weekday, every day, okay. like two or three weeks into it being aired. It was swiftly moved to like any time between one and 5 a.m. Uh, yeah, in the morning. And I played this traffic warden. Um, now, how it was sold to me was that there were, in the cast, there were like two sides of the cast. There were the beautiful people, and then there were the not beautiful people. And I very much sat over here in the non-beautiful brigade. Uh, and my part, I can't remember her name. I want to say, Lydia. Her name was Lydia. 
that was my character's name. It was Lydia and she was a traffic warden. And the most important thing about her is that she had a wart here on, on her nose, which was made out of a Rice Krispie. So if one was really going to pay attention, you would see that in fact it changes shape, size and position throughout the filming of this uh, terrible soap. And uh, yeah, so that was my second job. And then at the time it was terrible, but now I look back on life experience, I think actually it was probably a really good thing. I was out of work for one year, 11 months to the day. Um, and that was hard. It was hard for me, harder for other people who had to be around me. Because let me tell you, I remember when I was a kid, my mum said, you know, when you get older, time moves quicker. And I was like, stupid, time doesn't move any faster. Yes, it does. Because when I was 22 and unemployed for nearly two years, it was slow. Now it goes like that, it goes so quick. Um, but it was a good life lesson, really, really good life lesson. And you know, lots of my friends have come out of drama school and hadn't worked for a while, and they'd gone through that then. Whereas I had very luckily worked straight away, and then I had to learn about the business, about how not to take things for granted, about how it's really not okay to show up late for every single warm up. That was me on my first job, never again, ever yeah. again. But it was good. And then, you know, just sort of carried on from there. But then my first two jobs. Yeah. Wow amazing gosh that tv show sounds hilarious it was ridiculous it was utterly utterly ludicrous uh yeah dream sequences all over the place yeah I was going out with the heartthrob I got engaged to the heartthrob uh and he was he he went out with me because he it was right his girlfriend took a very beautiful girlfriend her name was Jane I think the character had gone missing and some reason he felt guilty about that so as to punish himself, he went out with Lydia. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Devastating. Oh yeah, God. I know. But like, the money was back then, certainly for someone who was 22, was like amazing, paid off my student loan. So I was like, fine by me. Give me that Rice Krispie. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. Wow. Incredible. Mental. Just mental time. Yeah, but the thing is, like you say, these jobs, however crazy, bonkers, enjoyable, not so enjoyable, what, whatever they may be, they do shape you as as a person and they do stick with you. Of course they do. Of course they do. I mean, luckily, in 20 years, I can probably say I've only not enjoyed two jobs, which I won't name. Um, and I, I've loved them. Even when I even when I look back and think, gosh, that probably wasn't very good. At the time, yeah. when I was doing it, I believed in it. Yeah. Not the TV show. I knew that was absolutely terrible, but it didn't sort of matter. <laughs> um, but certainly in theatre, mm -hmm. I, be, I, I always believe in what I'm doing. Yeah. Like you tell your kids, this, you just said before, you know, you believe in us so much. Well, of course I do. Because if you don't believe it, no one will ever believe it. So no matter how good or bad I think something is retrospectively, at yeah. that time, I have to believe that what I'm, we are doing yeah. is good and creative and means something. Yeah. And have you had um, a standout moment in your theatrical career? Have you had a moment where you've just gone, this is... I think the best thing I could be doing right now or this is just going to be the moment for me that will always stay with me? Um, I've had a couple, uh, luckily, because it's been a long time. Um, filming the Les Mis film, that I don't think it will ever be beaten for me because that was my childhood dream. Because yeah. remember, I said that is what I thought I would do. Yeah. And when I got to do it, it was everything that I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, and it's so it, 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 it gives you permission to be so real with it through uh, acting through song, which is the thing that I, I feel I'm probably best, you know, the, the, of all the things that I do, that's probably my strongest thing. Yeah. But in such a real way. And I didn't have to think about angles because, it, the, you know, the way they film it, they you do the rehearsal and then they see where you are and then they come inside you like in, in, in the group and film around it. So you can just be really natural. And it's how I imagine musical theatre to always be. Obviously, you know, you have the, your large musical theatre comedies, which are very, which are different, still, still should be based in truth, no matter what you say. But that absolute reality that we were able to do during that 
filming was li it literally will never be beaten, I think, as far as moments. Um, next to that would probably be performing um, at the Albert Hall for the uh, Olivia Awards last year. I mean, literally, I was like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit my job and become a pop star. This is where I'm meant to be. Look at me. Like, it was amazing. Um, wow. Yeah, that was that was that was right up there such lovely cast great show and real highlight a yeah. real highlight a venue you know ah, please I've um I've performed there before uh only once before I did um one of the very first uh staged concerts that they did at the proms okay I want to say the first but I'm, I might be wrong so I'm saying one of the uh I did my fair lady there but I was in the ensemble at the back and it was still brilliant but it's not quite the same as standing there in a line of 12 people at the front and taking that bow and they just and such pride I had such pride yeah yeah I bet I bet yeah I if you could meet anyone um, in the world, whether they be somebody who's no longer with us or somebody, you know, just a normal general person or some big famous Hollywood bud, who would it be? Um, I don't know. That's a really, really, really good question. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's probably got a few people. I think I'd like to have met Howard Keel. I think he's just glorious. Oh, he's glorious. When he died, I cried. Oh, I loved him so much. Um, I'd like to meet Melissa McCarthy because I just think she's just one of the most talented women and for me, a real, a real inspiration and a real hero. She is genius. <laughs> Everything she's in is so different. <laughs> just like so incredibly, yeah. She, she can play what I think like so many roles and so many emotions and everything is believable everything is you know just a stunning actress yeah. the end there, there, there's sort of no more discussion needed but there is always that um you know that there's always the comment to her physical appearance that sort of in spite of how she looks look how well she's done type thing and actually She's just so damn talented. Yeah. She's sure. one of the finest actresses of our time. Her and Tony Collette, because I think Tony Collette is oh day. Yeah. I think she's a stunning actress. Um yeah. but those two women, I always like you watch Melissa McCarthy in all of her films. I cannot remember the name of it. It it, it was based on a true story about a woman who um was essentially arrested in the end for fraud, giant fraud. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know what I mean. And then you take it that into something like identity theft, and then identity thief. Sorry, and then going back. Uh, I, th I think going back with the um, film she did with Sandra Bullock, and then all the way back to Gilmore Girls. And you think all these different roles that she played, and she's a chameleon. Yeah, she. she and you just think she's amazing. Yeah, I just think she's incredible. So her, I just yeah. do that. Applaud you. Applaud you. Just yeah. bow in front of yeah. her. I think she's fantastic. And um, what have you been up to in lockdown? What What have you been? Done a lot of baking. And now let me tell you, I'm not a good baker. I'm a good cook. My sisters, I have two younger sisters, two very tall and beautiful, talented sisters who uh, are exceptional bakers. Me not so much. Things always just go slightly awry. And it usually, I have to say, usually tastes okay, but it, it's not, it wouldn't look, it doesn't look good. No, no. Presentation's not the thing. And I don't understand what happens. I follow the recipe. I don't understand. Um, so, yeah, but I have been trying baking. I made a loaf of bread that would be the kind of thing you'd want to have to hand if an intruder came in. You're going to whack them on the head with that and, and they'd be dead. But you, I mean, you kill them kill a man um same with my chocolate brownies unfortunately I don't know what happened the day after they just went like little rocks like nice they still tasted good you had to heat them up to soften them down but so I've been trying baking not really my thing um we'll be seeing you on Bake Off then I mean Paul Hollywood would weep he would weep um lots of cooking lots of spending time with my dogs who are being very quiet right now thank goodness um and also I mean, creatively, I've been trying, 
I mean, I've left it quite late, but I sort of I got a voiceover agent last year. So I've been sort of trying to figure out home recording uh, sort of situation and also singing more than I think I've done in a long time. Because when I'm working, I tend not to really sing for pleasure because I'm more concerned about resting. Yeah, sure. one, must, one must rest. Um, so my poor neighbours, I feel bad for them. I feel bad. I do. I do. Because obviously, you know, if I'm singing, I'm, I'll am i be practising one song. So they will have heard, yeah, the same song over and over and over again. I'm not sounding too great, to be fair, because, you know, trying different new stuff. So that, that sort of creatively and practically is what I'm cleaning. My home has never been so organized and clean. It has never been so clean. But yeah, just just trying to keep going. Yeah. You know yeah. What I mean, trying to just keep every day is a new day. I think yeah. that's the only way. If you I think if you start to look too far ahead, <laughs> it's not the one. No. It, that's when panic sets in. So I think yeah. I try very much to just wake up every day like it's new and fresh and not much has you know nothing's really gone before to carry through into the next day and just keep just keep doing stuff just keep motivating yourself and doing stuff yeah you've got to I mean you know I don't know what kind of person you are but like for me I'm very much a I'm a planner I like to look ahead I like to make sure that I've got loads of stuff going on particularly you know with the company that I that I have you know I make sure that they've the kids have got things to look forward to got stuff going on and and in my personal life I like a a little break you know not necessarily an abroad holiday but like a little somewhere um I've got friends all around um the UK so I like going to see them spending time with them so I think when this happened for me it was a real like because um all of that goes out the window there's there's oh yeah I mean there's there's no planning um I am I a planner probably my husband would say most definitely And then we'll probably use the words control freak somewhere within that sentence. Uh, So this I I have to say this, the whole this whole situation for anyone who 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 likes a certain amount of control in their life, I think it has hit them quite hard uh, because obviously you can't control it. It is literally out of your hands and you just have to wait. Um, I have to say the first week after the theatres closed was hard. Yeah. it, trying to explain it to people I, my mum died um seven eight gosh eight years ago gosh it is eight years ago um and the only way I can describe it is akin to how I felt when she died it's like grief when all those theatres closed down it was one of, it, it, it I find it so upsetting it was one of the hardest things that apart from her dying that I've ever had to go through yeah um, the thought, I, and it's hard to sort of quantify it, but I've given my life to my job. I have. I don't have children apart from my furry babies, you know. Um, and someone is, something has has essentially wiped that away. Yeah. So I'm, you know, as it, sort of my soul, as it were, is a little bit lost. Yeah. And it's more than a job. I had a friend of mine say to me, my life's been cancelled. And she went, it's not your life, it's just your job. And I was like, oh, oh. oh. I don't I don't understand why you would say that to me you've known me for so long of course it's not just my job it's never just been a job it's always been more than that it's my life I think you it's it's weird isn't it to describe it to people I mean I I find it really hard you have to put so much of yourself into it 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 cannot be just your job it's not it is part of who you are unfortunately I'm sorry to say it defines me as a person my job and who I am are one thing and and it's not you know if let's take out the the idea that it's a job but my being an actor my being a storyteller my being a singer and a communicator of, of stories and other lives is something that I do from my soul happens to be that there is a job that I can do to do that but to say it's just a job, I was horror. I mean, it literally, I was like, I t- told one of my sisters, she was like, oh my God, I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. You're feeling it. Yeah. It, it feels like, it feels like someone has died. Yeah. And a lot of us, when we spoke, you know, lots of people in my cast I was in at the time and people that I knew, you know, from other shows, um, I just said, which I just can't stop crying because it is grief. And it, it's, 
obviously everybody's situation is different. You always think yours is the worst, but I don't know of any other industry where the people who work in it put so much of their soul into it. So for us, it was like something had died. My next question, what what is the best advice you've ever received? The best advice I've ever received, I, that's really simple. I came to me in 2000 and I want to say 15 or 16. I was sat on my own at home um, in my flat watching something on Netflix. And it was called Every Little Step. And it was a documentary about the remake of uh, the recasting and relaunching of a chorus line on Broadway. And historically, I've, as time has gone on, I had found auditions more and more nerve wracking because of the pressure of what, what you know, what hangs on, on that audition is, you know, is... Um, it's more than money and job. It's it's um, being validated, knowing that you're good, knowing that you're wanted and that the product that you have to offer is wanted. And that pressure can make people just lose their mind in auditions. Absolutely. Like, talented people. Yeah, I know I have friends who are talented. And they just go, I just lost. I just lost it in the audition. And you're like, oh, I feel you. Anyway, I'm sitting watching this program and a guy came on there and said, when you audition for a Broadway show, you're not doing an audition. You are doing an opening night performance. And I, I promise you, I was in my dressing gown. And I went, well, I can do that. Why did nobody tell me that? And that was the biggest shift for me. Because now when I go to an audition, I'm just performing. It's not an audition. It's just a performance. So for me, that was the biggest, biggest and best piece of advice. And I wish I'd had it 16 years earlier. 10 years earlier because I think it would have saved a lot of heartache of jobs I didn't get because I know that I didn't perform my best that is an amazing piece of advice and yeah. what a, <laughs> such a good way to look at it because yeah. yeah it is it's terrifying it's you know you're you're sat in a room and, and nobody likes to feel judged nobody likes yeah. to um the yeah they're being scrutinized and they're being you know torn apart and yeah. and what what they are bearing essentially um is not good enough and it's Absolutely. not so yeah what a way to look at it yeah, I'm giving you a performance and whether you like it or not I'm giving yeah. it to you and I'm moving on yeah this is not an odd it's just a performance of which as performers we all can do and we love it we love to do it yeah so that's that's okay. um, that for me is the best and do you have a go-to um song that if you you just you start <laughs> nodding already yes I have an interview I can't turn you around because I'm sure something terrible will happen I have a whole um uh, uh shelf there full of music and over there I have a cupboard which has got folders all the way down the bottom full of music and I sing like the same six songs that I have been singing for 20 years yeah so I still sing you can always count on me which I did in my second year at college I still sing 50 percent again did that in my second year at college uh, those are my two staples and in addition to those we have brought in oh when I sing um nobody does it better for anything that's not musical theatre so if they want folk or pop or R&B or rock I sing that one song and I just try and sing it slightly differently <laughs> <laughs> because essentially I do musicals so you know that's where we are um and I brought into that mix coloured lights okay. so my best friend Carrie and I did a duet version of it and um, a, a, a little cabaret that we did um, and it was lovely so I now sing that and also Meadowlark every last page all all the pages all of it evil the repeats all the pages all of it people are like mm -hmm. I'm still <laughs> that's right it's about five minutes that's how long I have don't chat to me. Let me just get on. Yeah. Although I, I sang it for Come From Away, my audition for Come From Away, because um, they asked they asked me to bring in a pop or folk song. So then, okay, I sort of see why, but really it's musical theatre. But I, I kind of see where you're going. Anyway, I took Nobody Does It Better, as I said before, because, you know, that's what I have. And Ian, um, the musical supervisor of America, was like, no, do you have something else? 
And I was like, yes, I always have my folder with me of all my songs that I, or five songs that I sing. And he was like, that's him, Meadowlark. And I was like, yes, because it's my thing. But I went over to the piano. He says, but we won't hear the whole thing. We'll just go from the middle. I was like, okay. It's like, oh, that's all right. But yeah, I have sung that. Those are my go-tos. And do you have a go-to, a genre of music that you love to listen to? No, no. I do not. I really, really eclectic musical taste. Um, and I think it's quite varied. Most people go, no, it's not. Oh, if my husband would hear, he'd pop his head around and go, name me one person in the charts. And I'd be like, um, I love 80s pop. I like uh, country music sometimes. I like just classical music. I like a bit of like soft rock, you know, chick rock. I like that. Um, yeah, it, it, I think it's fairly eclectic. I'm not, I respect opera, but I don't choose to listen to it. Yeah. And I can't get my head around uh, rap. I respect it as a genre because I think those lyrics that they write the, are just amazing. It's just not something that was sort of sings to me. Particularly. Apart from classical, anything I can sing along to, I like. Yeah. Basically, yeah. that's that's basically where we are. As long as I can sing to it, I like I like it. It's so funny because I've interviewed so many people, um, particularly in musical theatre industry, and loads of them have been like, I've no idea what's in the charts. Like, literally. I if I if I met any of those people on the street, I. I, I mean, I just wouldn't know who they were. I could trip over the I'd be like, who from this? One Sunday morning, I turned to my husband, I went, who's that guy that sings a song about the shoes? It's Spoonsy or something. He's like, do you mean Stormzy? I was like, yes, that's him, Stormzy. He was like, Spoonsy? I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, we're really quiet. And then went, you're not very cool, are you? I was like, no. <laughs> no. no. Nope, sorry. Oh, yeah, we have a dog called Spoonsy, just to remind me of my eternal shame of being uncool. Brilliant. Honestly, the only reason I kind of know who's in the charts is because of the kids that I teach, you know. Yeah. They'll come to one-to-one -to -one lessons, they'll be like, oh, Jen, there's this really cool song, you know, and I'm like, okay, how does it go? And they'll sing it, and I'm like, no, I don't know that. Literally never heard of that. You're dying of shame, like, oh. And I get some of them, that they say to me, are you lying when you say you're in your 20s? And I'm like, what do you mean? Well, because are you, though? Like, because like, my mum's 28 and she knows a lot, like, more cool stuff than you do. I can get away with it because I'm 40. Like, I, I am not cool and I don't understand the music. I don't get it. Don't but understand. it's all right. I'm old. I'm allowed to be middle. Oh, you're old. You don't understand life. That's all right. I'm OK with that. That's OK. But Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I just go with the whole, you know, we all like different things and, you know, just because, yeah, if ever we do like group warm ups and stuff, they're like, oh, cool. What, you know, who gets to choose the music? And I always go, I do. And they go, oh, yeah, you'll be dancing to 80s pop and you'll like it. 80s pop or um, 90s Backstreet Boys steps. Yes, yes, yes. steps. God, come on. Like, that's, who that's good education. Oh, well, I think that's so. Right there. That is good education. I I think I give the full experience at, at my theatre company. I'm proud of you for that. The kids would probably differ in opinion. But <laughs> I think so. Yeah, no, my, my musical taste is, is apparently rubbish. But oh well. Yes, it's mine. But I'm all right with that. I'm oh, okay with that. Okay, safe with that. So embarrassing. Yeah. Apparently, I, oh, yeah, I am. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm proud of you. Thank I'm you. proud of you. <laughs> I mean, you know, we've got to take it for the team. <laughs> um, you were talking a little bit there about Come From Away. How did you um, find that? Because it is based on, obviously, some there are some truthful elements of, of that show. It's all true. Um, it's based on uh, hours and hours and hours of interviews. Uh, there are things said in that show which are verbatim. Um, every Everything that you... Uh, if you if you've seen the show everything that you've seen is real it's all happened it's all true and it's you know yes it's word of mouth a lot of the stuff is documented it's historical fact about you know where they were what happened there are photos and and you know home videos of of these things occurring um so it was it, it it's it was quite um a, a different process to any other musical I've ever done uh yeah. we sat for the first week and, and just read through the script talking about it we did a lot of research we were given research packs we watched documentaries um 
mo I think everyone in our cast was alive when it happened. Our cast are a little older. We have we did have some people who were in their twenties. You weren't. Were you alive when it happened? You were just. Well, um, God. Two thousand and one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was six. Yeah, I think we have people in the cast similar, so they don't really no, remember I'd, it in I'd, the same way. No. Um, I am right. It's two thousand and one. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't remember it. No, because I was six. No. I, I was I was twenty two, and I'd not long finished the beautiful game. The beautiful game closed. It was either the fourth or the fifth of September that year, and the only reason I remember it being the fourth or the fifth is because we opened either the fourth or the fifth of September the year before, okay. and we either did a year and a day or we didn't quite do a year, and, and I can't remember in my mind. I've, I've got it written down somewhere, but um, so it wasn't what well, it was like five, six, a week after it happened. I was doing a temp job, and somebody came into the um uh, the office where I was and said a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center and I, I had no idea what that was I knew what the Twin Towers were and I'd heard of the World Trade Center I, I didn't know at that time that that was the same place um so going back to rehearsals and looking at all the footage that I had seen firsthand was um it was it was amazing how it still had such a huge impact watching that footage because I haven't seen it in, in in decades yeah but watching it takes your breath away it does um and then you you know you're telling this story but you're not telling that story you're not the story isn't about what happened at the World Trade Center that is something that occurred and you're telling a story about what happened because of it yeah and you know, the the story of Come From Away is beautiful it's a beautiful reminder of just how brilliant people can be yeah. just how exceptional human beings can choose to be in, in in the face of such horrifying circumstances they chose to be the best of people in the worst of times I guess yeah and I guess that's really nice you know in a way that you're able to tell a story that a lot of the time in theatre um it's not it's not factual information. It, it is just a story in, in a sense. Yeah. You know, um, that in itself is great that you can tell that story, but this is something totally different. You know, you are actually telling. Um, Literally, let me tell you what happened. That my, uh, my character, Beulah, her first line is, that morning I was in the classroom. That that morning. And I've spoken to Diane Davis. So I we've met the people that we play. A lot of the characters are based on more than one person because, you know, there were, about, well, as you know, thousands of people um, there. So there were thousands of stories to tell. So they, they've taken, and a lot of the stories are similar. They had similar experiences, but they've taken them and they've merged them into one character. So we can tell as many stories as possible. My particular character, um, my um gander person is based on two women a woman called diane davis so she's the beulah davis the davis part and a lady called beulah cooper it's the beulah part and the diane davis she's the school teacher right. and she said the first thing she knew about it was when a mother came to the school and said i want to, i'm taking my kids out she's like what well, something's happened i'm taking my kids out she's like okay, okay and then another mother came in i'm taking my kids out. what is happening and that's when it unfolded. And she was the person that was, you know, one of the people in the school that that got that together, the Gander Academy. She was one of the person that one of the people, sorry, that um, was instrumental in in the taking care of all those people that came to the academy, and, along with everyone else. I mean, you know, that they're, they're all they're all just exceptional amazing story and my last question kind of leads into that you know what is next for you after lockdown do you hope to go I mean yes yeah I hope that we can go back to where we were uh on the 16th 15th 14th 13th of I have to remember the day 13th of March that Saturday night we had um more than a full house we had people standing at the back absolutely who were loving the story and I think they really needed to hear it because things were starting to get a little scary yeah um 
So I hope after lockdown that we all go back to work and people come to the theatre yeah. because it'll be scary. I get that. Yeah. It'll be scary for us and for them. But yeah. I, I hope that people see that they have to move. They, we have to move on. We have to keep going. Um, and I think theatre is such a brilliant place to bring people together and remind them that, you know, certainly in our show, a terrible thing happened, but we, we moved forward and we've moved on. And, yeah. you know, yes, it's scary, but yeah. we together and it'll be great. So I hope, hope, touch wood, that we yeah. are back sooner rather than later, but in a, in a safe, not in a foolish way, in a safe way. So yeah. that, that's what I'm hoping for after lockdown. That I can go back to work. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, thank you so much for. Oh, it's been lovely. I've had a great time. Me too. <laughs> I love. I love having a chat. I mean, you know, it's it's one thing that from this, like I was saying, it, I I felt very very similar to you. Very lost as to where where we were going. We were literally a week away from our annual show, so it was oh, that. I know you've got to do it. Yeah, we've got thirty two kids ready and and waiting to to oh. do it. Bear it. I know. So we were. So it from our our Christmas term, the children do um kind of like outreach stuff. So we go to um like old people's homes and and sing and and we sing in the community kind of yeah. kind of that's that's our Christmas term usually. Sometimes a, a Christmas performance, but that's what we were doing yeah. in order for me to then write the show and then secure the venue and stuff like that. And then they got their scripts then just before Christmas prep then over the Christmas holidays ready to start in January and then January to the middle of March is always um rehearsals so um yeah it's cast they're rehearsing we've got props costumes uh, hey I can't yeah. bear it that, they must have been devastated I can't tell you I can't tell you that moment where so I, I teach vocal lessons to a lot of these kids and then other children um within the county on a Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and it was Tuesday night and it was that night where it was like things are getting really bad I had a lot of messages from parents like this is the 17th people were like this is not good you know we we need to and I had to make that decision I finished work at eight o'clock on that Tuesday with my last child I waved her out the door and I thought I can't I, I have to we can't do this now and it was yes devastating it is absolutely yeah. because you know everything that you've worked hard for everything that the children have their families the parents the people that support the show that you know everything is yeah. now stopped and and the first words out of my mouth were, we're not cancelling this show. We can't cancel it. We will postpone it. We have to postpone yeah. it. But we can't cancel it because there's so much that's gone into it. And everybody needs to see this show. You know, it, it needs to be done. And also there needs to be a light at the end of the tunnel. There, need, there needs to be, for, for you, for all those children that have worked so hard, for their parents that were looking forward to it, there needs to be something to look forward to. Absolutely. You know, we have to be safe, be sensible, get through this time. Yeah. And there will be good stuff, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I think, like, in a weird way, although we would never have wanted it and we don't want it again, it, this has come at a time for us. You know, we, we were so close. I think when we get back to it, obviously, we will have to do some more rehearsals before yeah. we actually performance. But I think it will make it so much like oh my god, so special. You've waited so long. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's still going to happen. It is the same thing. I think I imagine what opening nights will be like oh. all over the country. I'm oh how oh. special that will be. Yeah. Honestly, it is going to be like I've said this to so many people, you know, we've chatted about it. It's gonna be that feeling of the first time you've ever done it mm. you know but everyone involved you, not just for the people on the stage the people behind the scenes the people watching it the first thing that you've watched since all of this oh, is like I don't I almost I think that would be amazing the yeah. first thing that you've watched if you're a avid theatre go if you're a fan of a show the first time you see your show again after all that time being away in oh my god it's just too special you people don't understand people no. don't understand how special it is and it's impossible to explain that you try you try and and people can see on your face they're like my god you love but you do you so much of yourself is is this um you know 
oh, I, I can't I can't wait for it, you know, in our small corner of the world in, in West Wales, but also ev- everywhere else. You know, I've lived in London. Um, I remember going to see shows all the time and it's just that that atmosphere and that. Yeah, it's like nothing else. It will just it will be just incredible. It really, really will be. And I hope, hope to all the gods that everyone believes in nature and everything that we are able to be back there, all of us. Yeah. in whatever respect yeah definitely as soon as is possible absolutely well thank you so much you've been My brilliant pleasure. it's been a lovely lovely chat it has been and i will send you and um, the link for this when it goes up perfect thank you so much oh, no worries i'd love to stay in contact stay safe please do please do and also when you guys oh let me know when you're doing your show because i'm gonna I'd love to send them a little like good oh. luck love that they'd love that be grand that'd be great oh you're a star take care of yourself lovely to chat jen yes you too bye bye i want to take the time now to thank jenna and also thank you thank you for watching and for your support i really hope that at this time it has been just something fun for you to watch and helped us share a smile with you all more great guests still to come so make sure you tune in and if you haven't done so already make sure you like and subscribe and share with everybody we want to continue to share a smile take care see you soon bye bye